part A of question four is asking if we can establish causation. And we can, because the patients were randomly assigned to the procedure type, a statistically significant result would be strong evidence the procedure causes a reduction in recovery time. Now, I think AP stats teachers often caution students about causation, and we do this a lot. So I'm actually thinking this question will throw a lot of kids off, and they're going to instead explain why causation is not appropriate. But assuming all the conditions were met and these are randomly assigned to the procedure type, we can say that's what caused the reduction in recovery time. For part B, I'm going to do the four-step process. So let's start with state. We wish to test the following hypotheses at the alpha equals 0.05 level. Our null is going to be mu substandard minus mu sub nu equals zero. In other words, there's no difference between the true mean recovery time for the two procedures. Our alternative hypothesis is that mu substandard minus mu sub nu is greater than zero. In other words, the standard procedure has a longer mean recovery time. And I'm also going to write where mu is the true mean recovery time in days for each procedure, just to make sure I've defined my parameters. In the plan step, I need to state my inference method. Now, since we're comparing means of two different groups, this is going to be a two-sample t-test. So let's check the conditions. For the random condition, we'll say that patients were randomly assigned to the procedure type. So that condition's met. The independent condition is always a little tricky, and lately the College Board's grading rubrics haven't really included much addressing the independent condition. So my best guess here is we must assume that each patient's recovery time is independent, but it might not be necessary to list that condition at all. The next one is essential, the normal condition. Now both the standard and the new procedure groups have sample sizes well above 30, so it's safe to use T procedures. And we're using t here because we have the sample standard deviation, not the population standard deviations for recovery times for these procedures. Now most of the do step is going to be done on the calculator. Um, so you start by pressing stat and go over to test and down to two sample t-test. Now you have the option of inputting the original data, which we don't have, or the summary statistics, which we do have. So we actually have all this information. The mean for the standard group was 217. The standard deviation was 34. And the sample size was 110. Now the mean for the new group was 186. The standard deviation was 29. And the sample size was 100. Now we're interested in if our mean one, which is standard, is greater than our mean two. That would mean a longer recovery time. Now where it says pooled, uh, always say no. Now I'm gonna push uh, draw first. All right, so here's a T distribution and I don't see anything shaded. That's because our p-value is basically zero. Our test statistic is higher than seven. I mean, this is very statistically significant results. So I'm going to go back and uh, this time, instead of pushing draw, I'm going to push calculate. All right, so there's the p-value in more detail in our test statistic, our degrees freedom, 207. So really, we have to decide what we're going to write here. So I'm going to write the formula for calculating t and substitute the values in, but I'm not actually going to calculate this. I'm just going to trust the what the calculator came up with here. So this equals about 7.127, and our p-value approximately equal to zero. And I'm going to put degrees freedom was approximately equal to 207. Um, 0.179. Draw a little arrow and write calc, so they know I found it on the calculator. Now it's always a good idea to draw a curve. Since our p-value is zero, it's gonna be a pretty boring um, sketch, but I'm just gonna draw a quick little t-distribution. Our test statistic is 7.127, so here's zero right here. Seven is gonna be way out here. Maybe it's like, here. 
And so here's our, our P value down here. So for our conclusion, we'll say with a p-value of about zero, which is less than any reasonable alpha value, we reject the null hypothesis. There is overwhelming evidence to support the claim that the new procedure has a shorter true mean recovery time than the standard procedure. Now, going back to part A, that means there's strong evidence the new procedure results in a shorter recovery time. Now that last line in the conclusion is because this was an experiment, we can actually establish causation. If you liked my explanation of this problem, you might also like my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. The book has 100 problems and every one of them has a YouTube video that explains every single step.